Good evening and welcome to the vlog. So I just checked into my new hotel room in Paris and check out this view. Back here you can see a Sacre Coeur on the top of the hill of Montmartre. So that's pretty cool and the view is not quite as cool as my old hotel room. If you're wondering what that was all about, do check out my previous vlogs on my channel. But um, as you can tell, sunset's already kicking off really hard right now and I'm running super late so I don't know why I'm still in this hotel room talking to you guys. Let's get out there and catch the last bit of good light and take some great photos too of course. Let's go. Sacre -Cœur. So despite hyping up the Sacre Coeur Cathedral, the plan is actually not to shoot there tonight so of course it's a beautiful church and definitely one of uh, Paris's most beautiful sites but the problem with that church is to get the good angle you're gonna have about um, a thousand tourists in your shot so it's just really difficult to get a good photo there unless you perhaps go there for sunrise and some uh, early in the morning when there's nobody there yet so this being a sunset though that kind of puts that place uh, out of a question but I've got another great little secret spot in mind where we're headed right now I'll tell you all about it when we get there but it's basically just a very beautiful Parisian street scene that I've seen in many photos on Instagram that inspired me to go get my own so let's head over there and I'll show you the finer intricacies of why I like the specific scene so much. So the street I'm currently on will form the composition of the shot I'm really after tonight, but uh, before we talk more about the shot and the composition, there's another thing I really wanted to touch on, and that's the reason why I actually ended up missing the sunset today. So that wasn't due to um, my own slackness or ability or inability to keep time that had nothing to do with that. The reason why I missed sunset today is just purely down to priorities and what happened was I was stuck at the office, had some important things I really needed to do, some emails I needed to get out and for me that 100% took priority over photography and catching a sunset and the reason I wanted to bring that up is because the other day on Instagram I briefly touched on that, how um, right onto my job Mark. takes me to a lot of cool places and how I'm so grateful and all, about all the hard work I put in and all the benefits and rewards I reap because of it and I think that's very important to highlight that at the end of the day hard work takes you places. In my case it was my corporate job that it managed to take me to Paris, well, pay for the travel, pay for the hotels and that's awesome. do, but Because I think on social media there are far too many people out there who um, will try to sell you a dream, make their life look they've, like they're permanently on vacation and just having a great time in some of the most beautiful spots in the world and never have to work a day in their life and that's all bells and whistles and smoke and mirrors and that's not the reality of life. I think if you work hard you can achieve and accomplish anything you want to do and I mean that sounds cheesy but it's just simply true so I know how I got here through hard work, sweat and tears and I think that's really important to touch on and that's something I want to bring out more through my own social media channel, through my own audience where I highlight the dangers of social media where um, people are under so much pressure and so much bad uh, negative things are happening to people's mental health because of being sold a dream on social media. I just simply think that's not okay. I don't stand for that and that's why I'm talking to you guys about that. So yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest and typically I do try to keep my social media and my corporate life a little bit separate. So that's why you don't see me touching on that a lot in this channel or on my Instagram, but that side of me is very much existing and alive and I'm extremely proud of those accomplishments too, not just my photography ones. So. With that being said, let's talk photography again. So almost at the location actually. Took a slight detour here to talk to you guys, give you guys a little DMC, but um, back to photography. So let's head up to the location, get the camera out and let the fun part of the evening begin. That's Space Invaders by the way. He's a very famous um, street artist. He doesn't do graffiti with spray cans, but he just goes around and puts these little Space Invader uh, mosaics on street corners, which I think is pretty cool. Random fact. I just arrived at the place I was hyping about so much earlier in the video and here it is. So um, this beautiful vantage point up here just gives you this beautiful view down, down the street down here and this is really the perfect time to capture it because I love how the blue hour is kicking in while the warm yellow lights coming out of the windows of the buildings and on the street lamps it just makes for that really strong contrast between the warm light on the bottom of the street with a dark blue um, lack of light on the top of the sky. So. I think that's really beautiful and let me just point out some few more com uh, intricacies of this composition. So what I love about the shot is how much iconic um, Paris is going on in the shot right now. You got this classic cafe over here with the round tables in the foreground which is just very quintessential Paris. 
and you got this Art Nouveau Metropolitan sign with the entrance of the metro just here, that's why all these people are coming out. As well as um, these cobbled streets are also just really beautiful and the way um, the light is bouncing off these rocks just to accentuate the foreground a bit more and give it a bit of texture, it's just beautiful in the foreground. And then I love how much depth the scene is with the, um, the, the viewer's eyes just being guided down the streets by all these street lights and how deep and long that stretches out into the city. And in order to capture this entire scene, the only way to do that is of course to use a wide angle lens. So using an 18mm prime wide angle lens here and that just really allows me to frame uh, both sides of the street as well as the top of these buildings all the way to the bottom and that's just really the perfect lens and I love this little lens I've got by size. really makes a huge difference into uh, really rendering all these beautiful details. So without further ado and without me rambling on too much longer, here's the final picture. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. Now I'd come here during the day previously and don't get me wrong, during the day it's also super pretty. I mean the composition speaks for itself, it's super strong and a lot going on and I just love that. So during the day it looks beautiful too. But I think the perfect time to come to this specific spot is um, during blue hour for sure. I just love that coldness in the sky versus that warmth emanating from those yellow lights. Just look perfect and uh, just looking at the back of my camera, the straight out of camera shot looks really really good already and I haven't even edited it yet so I think that photo has strong potential and I can't wait to get back on the laptop and get editing on that but before I do that I'm getting really hungry and I think it's time to have dinner so I've been staring at this cafe the whole time and I think uh, when, when in Paris you should definitely enjoy the local cuisine so definitely gonna head over there and eat something and then afterwards we're actually gonna keep shooting Just finished eating dinner and the food was really amazing as it always is in Paris. So I just realized I'd been talking about this location non-stop and didn't even tell you guys where it is. So if you want to come here yourself, I recommend you type into Google Maps Le Refuge, which is the name of the cafe, or up here is also the name of the metro station. So type that into Google Maps and you can find this awesome location yourself. So if you've been watching my videos for some time, you'll know, and if you haven't been watching my videos for some time, I recommend you don't make that mistake again, hit that subscribe button below. Anyway, often I end my videos saying that it's night now and I don't like shooting at night and that's the perfect time to end this video. Tonight, however, is not one of those nights, so my stance remains unchanged. I'm not a big fan of shooting night photography. For this specific shot I had in mind, and I've been wanting to get the shot for a very, very long time, I think night would be the perfect time to shoot it. So let's head over to the Moulin Rouge and uh, set up the camera over there and hopefully get the shot I've been chasing for many, many years. So can't wait to finally get it, hopefully, fingers crossed. But the best way to do that is to head over there and try and make this happen. Let's go. Here we are, made it at last. There's the Moulin Rouge and I can't believe how popular this place is. Completely underestimated it. There's just heaps and heaps of people. It's gonna be very difficult to set the camera up and get a good clean shot, but I'm gonna do it my best anyway and I'm not walking away from here without getting that shot. So early on in the video, I was complaining how Saka Curve would have a lot of people and how that would be impossible to photograph, but we've really uh, got a challenge cut out for us here. So let's not hesitate any longer and give it our best shot anyway. That's all you can do and that's what I'm here for. So let's go do this. So I've been able to find a good spot right in front of the crowd, which is all behind me, and um, there's an unobstructed view of Moulin Rouge, which is great, so that was easier than I thought it would be. The issue now is the traffic, because it's very busy and there's a lot of cars coming past and uh, getting a clean shot, of just a gap between the traffic's really hard, so to try to time that at the moment, just to get the shot just right. So every few minutes, one of these huge tour buses pulls up, and why this totally ruins the composition, I don't think I need to explain to you. So currently waiting for all these 50 people to get out and hopefully for the bus to move before we even get another chance of potentially getting another shot. So yeah, all these buses and people parking out in front of us making it really difficult. I mean this guy's literally parked right in front of the camera so it's definitely a, a test of perseverance and just endurance and hopefully we'll get that clean break. Also hating this white panel van, don't know why he had to stop there. And yeah, just gonna be camping out here and waiting for a while till I get that shot that I'm really happy with. 
so after a very lengthy wait, finally managed to get a gap in the traffic, which is now blocked again. But um, in that short gap, I got all the shots I really needed. And let me talk you through the shooting technique and what went through my mind when shooting uh, the Moulin Rouge. So the key thing to remember here is that you're shooting a moving object at night. The moving object being this windmill up here. And that should, ask, that should make you ask yourself, um, what's the appropriate shutter speed to capture this? And there's three different ways of capturing this uh, windmill. So the first one being, you can use a very fast shutter speed which freezes motion and you get the windmill uh, still. The second way of shooting it is that you capture a bit of motion and you get a tiny bit of motion blur onto the, um, I guess the propellers of the windmill. And the third way of doing it is doing a long exposure where you uh, go for a very long shutter speed and the entire um, windmill turns into a spinning disc. Now, um, let me talk you through my settings of each of these three shots. The fast shutter speed was uh, 1 30th of a second, ISO 400 and uh, f2.8. The second one was ISO 100, f9, 1.6 seconds, and that got a bit of medium blur on it. And the third shot was 10 seconds at f16, uh, ISO 50. Now, um, as you can tell from these three shots, that they all look very different and they all have a unique feel to them. So I'd love to hear your opinion on those. Which one was your favorite of the three? Let me know in the comments below. My personal favorite, by the way, is the one where I froze the motion. I just think it's the cleanest and sharpest and um, yeah, it really just portrays the Moulin Rouge the best in my personal opinion. But um, definitely keen to hear, hear, hear your view as well. So I do think in the end that the patience and perseverance paid off and I'm really happy for shots I got. Did have to stand around and wait for quite a while though, but um, yeah, so happy the shots are in the bag and with that I am going to call it a night. So um, thank you for joining me on this adventure. And as always, thanks for watching and I'd love your help in making this channel grow. So really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down below as you desire. Because all that uh, it does really make a difference and does help this channel grow by you getting involved. So thanks for that and if you aren't already, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button below. I hope to see all of you guys in the next episode. Good night for now. Bye.